Dawson, recibiste las instrucciones. Protect yourself. Protégete todo el tiempo. Buena suerte. Good luck. Let's go. Who is the best lightweight in the world? We're about to find out. Well, he watched all the hard work that Ronnie Shields did in bringing Rocky Juarez home to the draw with Chris John in the first fight. Now he goes to work again because Shields also trains Juan Diaz. Marquez's trainer, Nacho Beristain, was the man who handled Oscar De La Hoya in his disastrous outing against Manny Pacquiao. Already the pressure from Diaz begins. Good straight left hand by Diaz, and the chopping left hook in the corner. And another left hook backs up Marquez against the ropes. Marquez hasn't found the counter-punching rhythm quite yet. As a matter of fact, Marquez has not been able to land to me one clean blow yet. And Marquez, I... So far seems just a bit off balance in the face of Diaz's aggression. Diaz showing respect, but ripping Marquez with another left hook. Three body shots from Marquez. Diaz goes in with the right hand. This is going to be a hellacious war. Unlike a lot of fights between a younger and older fighter, in this case, the early rounds seem to favor Diaz, where he can take over with his energy and volume punching. Marquez relies on precision counter punches, which may tell later in the fight. Marquez works his way into the fight. Remember, down three times against Pacquiao in the first round of the first fight. Down in the second round of the second fight. Had trouble early and begins to go to work technically. What's impressive to me right now is Diaz's defense. He's been able to pick most of Marquez's punches and has found a way of getting Particularly his little short left jab through to hit Marquez for the most part. I thought, I, I thought this is what we would see starting about the fourth round, but not in the first round. See, what I just saw over the last 15 or 20 seconds was Marquez land a couple of clean shots and then block everything Diaz had to throw over the, you know, by the ropes. Maybe he's already making adjustments. Well, Diaz's great brain power serves him well, not just in the college classroom. He's used it throughout his learning curve in the ring. And Marquez just might be the smartest fighter in the sport. So you're looking at great intellect as well as great athletic talent. Not to mention the well-known cultural Mexican tradition of willing to mix it up. And are they ever? Left hook by Diaz. Marquez trying to fire back. Lands a right cross and a left hook. Round one is an all-out war. It didn't four. The 95 punches thrown by Marquez, the most ever thrown in a round by Marquez in a fight tracked by CompuBox. Translation, he was forced to play Diaz's game. Absolutely. And when Diaz is exchanging, notice Diaz is punching straight through the middle with punches where he's really exerting his weight. It is, it, even though they weighed in the same, and I guess tonight Marquez weighed in more, but I just see the natural strength more with Diaz. And he's punching in a manner where he's forcing Marquez to back up by pushing his punches straight forward and pushing his weight at the same time. And by the way, with the sole exception of his one loss in the Campbell fight, Diaz's stamina across the long course of the fight has always been amazing to behold. So don't expect much of a slowdown. If anything, if he gets his chance, he might crank it up a little more. But now the pace slows a little bit in the second round as Marquez begins to add more variety to his game. You saw the left-hand uppercut. Body shots by Diaz. I get the hunch that Marquez is going to need to stay off the ropes, Emmanuel. Yes, and I don't think he's going to do that. And the way that Diaz is punching, he's got his head down more. Well, he's getting better leverage in the exchanges, and Marquez's head is up more. This crowd is on its feet already, and they may be on their feet all the way. You notice Diaz is not throwing that many hooks. He's shooting his punches straight where he can maximize his strength. Big left hook. Staggers Marquez. Marquez in trouble and trying to fight his way out of it. And we've seen this from Marquez before when he's stunned, and he was stunned there. His instinct is to fire right back. Maybe the truest mark of a real champion. But he's in with a bigger man this time, you guys, and I can see the difference in the strength right now. 
If Diaz had world-class power for the weight, Marquez might have been gone right there. It was an unbelievable shot. But if Marquez continues to fight back. His punching power is not that bad. That would, you know, he still may possibly stop Marquez. Uh, at least knock him down. We saw that instinct that I mentioned from Morales and Barrera in this last featherweight golden era. And I think Marquez has the same thing inside him. In fact, if you wanted to find a comparison for what round one looked like, it looked like a round out of a Morales Barrera fight. And so does this one. I, I, I like Diaz's defense for the most part, which I'm surprised. They're both going to land more than 30 punches in the round. Big left hook by Diaz, straight right hand by Marquez. Good left hook by Marquez on the top of Diaz's head. Diaz jabbing and hunting. Marquez going to the body and coming back up. Here we say Diaz driving in, as we call him, left hook right there, and had probably more effect than it, it, it would have had, except because he had him back and back. And he's maximizing his weight on every punch by lunging forward as he punches. Happy box numbers in the second round. Marquez 34 out of 94. Diaz 30 out of 98. So if the first round was counted round, the second round was the second largest number of punches ever thrown in a copy box counted round. They're still basically playing Diaz's game. Marco is a very intelligent fighter, though. If there is any mistakes in Diaz's arsenal, you can be sure that Marco is going to find him out as the fight goes on. Oh, I think very intelligent just... is an understatement. Yes. He's a supremely intelligent fighter. Yes. He's blessed with excellent reflexes and very good punching power, but you have to wonder about those reflexes at the age of 35. And particularly given the wars he's been in. And a guy's had as many terrific fights against great opponents as Marquez has had. Every once in a while, they go off the diving board all at once. But he's looked really good in the first couple of rounds against a guy who's looked just a tiny bit better. Yeah, but the guy's putting a lot of pressure. I don't think Marquez, this pressure is going to probably negate a lot of his counter-punching better because it's making him fight at a faster pace than he likes to fight at. Do the uppercut from a little too far away. He's going to have to get closer to do it right. Good straight jabs by Marquez there, momentarily stopping Diaz in his tracks. And tracks they are as Juan stalks and stalks. Four punch combination by Diaz. This is the Juan Diaz that had the boxing world buzzing before his loss to Nate Campbell. Well, what a win! What determination! Good luck took by Diaz. So Marquez is landing punches, but the, the weight on us. But even though Mar Marquez is landing punches just as good sometimes. Good right hand by Marquez. Right behind Diaz's guard and on the ear. This kind of competition. A lot of Marquez advocates thought this might be man against boy. So far, it's been man on man. And pushing his punches forward with four fours, and also you see punches coming back from Marquez, which are counter punches, but it don't create the excitement because he's not forcing Diaz to back back, but he's still landing clean, effective punches. Combi box numbers through round three. Marquez 91 out of 268. Diaz 87 out of 281. Harold, how do you have it so far? I'll get you three rounds to nothing, 30 to 27, one Diaz. Jim, one quick thing about our last fight. I absolutely can't remember the last time I saw three judges score for the draw. Very, very rare. Back to this fight. 
Juan Diaz keeps walking him down, landing clean, hard, effective shots. And when he gets Marquez on the ropes, Marquez seems to lose his head and stand there and slug with Diaz. And that's how Diaz wants to fight. Juan Diaz led the more clean shots. Just like he's doing right there. Three to nothing, Diaz. You know, I understand that score. And Diaz is imposing his kind of fight. But I'll tell you the truth, guys. I think Marquez is landing the harder punches. Well, I think he might be a harder puncher, but of course, Diaz, as we pointed out, is by nature the bigger man and more of a natural lightweight. Uh, Emmanuel. Okay, I mean, Diaz throwing a hook and needs to block it and shoot his counter hook at the exact same time. Diaz has been brilliant so far at finding those moments when Marquez's right hand is slightly dropped. He's landed several plus left hooks. Yeah, and he gets maximum level. He hunches his body forward in a Joe Frazier type style, where his left hook has tremendous force because he has his weight leaning right into the position where he can load up on the left hook. But look at the comeback combination by Marquez. A four-punch counterpunch combination. Awesome stuff. Should a fight like this even be scored? Here you say Diaz land his beautiful left hook. Evidently, Marquez cannot feel the left hook when it's coming. Most effective punches towards the end of that round. I agree with you, Mike. He just doesn't get the credit, but because you know he doesn't move Diaz back. Where when Diaz lands a punch, he always forces Marquez's head and his body to move back. But Marquez is landing a lot of clean, effective combinations, particularly at the end of the round. Diaz is trying to follow in the footsteps of boxing greats like Jake LaMotta, Jeff Fennec, and others who were great pressure fighters, even though they weren't big punchers, but they were able to establish themselves with their volume of punching and their physical strength. his will against Marquez on the ropes and catches him again with a left hook as Marquez steps away. Now Marquez will look to land a three or four front combination and he nails Diaz with two uppercuts in a row. Both from the left side. Straight right hand down the pipe by Diaz. Lands twice in a row. Whoever throws more body punches may ultimately be the winner in the fight. Well, I tell you what, this is going to be a tough fight by the Another huge left hook by Diaz. I mean, these guys are fighting at a pace and, and putting such mustard on each shot and fighting at a skill level. You rarely see all those elements combined. Big in a body fight. shot by Marquez. You know, referee Rafael Ramos has not had to break these guys up for one clinch at all that I can remember. I didn't even know he was in the ring. No, nope, they're just fighting their way straight through the fight. You know, not to say it's quite on that level yet, but in certain ways it's reminiscent of Corrales and Castillo. No the clinches. Of bombs that are being landed. I guess not, but no clinches, a fast pace, hard shots, high skill level. Unclear who will ultimately impose their will. That fight was in 2003, I believe, on our competing, a competitor network, Showtime. One difference, maybe those guys were slightly heavier punches, but neither of them had the volume that these guys are producing tonight. Good 
left hook. Marquez has been cut in that same spot before against both Manny Pacquiao and Joel Casamayor. Nacho Beristain has worked that cut before and he's working it again tonight. Diaz was cut badly in the Campbell fight. But other than that, his features have held up very well despite his non-stop high pressure style in other fights. Another big left hook by Diaz. I mentioned the body shot disparity. I believe it's Marquez, really, who's thrown more body shots early and is landing them at a high rate. Blood begins to trickle again from the cut just outside Marquez's right eye. There, Diaz got in a solid body shot against the ropes. Marquez is beginning to become more conscious of trying to block Diaz's left hook. Diaz is adjusting by going to the body instead. If Marquez is not setting a trap when he's retreating to the ropes, that's a very good sign for Diaz. But I was very impressed with the point that you mentioned, Jim, that he's been able to neutralize Diaz's left hooks lately. He has not been hit with any of those left hooks. And that's a sign of a very intelligent fighter. Marquez, even the crowd is excited, but, but Marquez is landing most of the cleaner blows in those exchanges. There. Diaz eats a hard right hand, lands a hard. That's not really how fights are scored by judges. How do you have it? No, Jim. Four rounds to two. 58. 56 1 DSM. One man will mark his million to stay off them ropes. When he goes on the ropes, Juan Diaz just pummels him like you're watching right here. When the fight goes into the center of the ring, one man will, one man will, one man will mark his does very, very well. But he ought to stay off the ropes. He's given Diaz the advantage of that effective aggressiveness and, you know, and using his size by going up on the ropes. 4 to 2, Juan Diaz. Here's an amazing statistic, guys. Through six rounds of this fight, and despite the fact that Marquez twice went 12 rounds with Manny Pacquiao, Juan Diaz has already thrown more power punches against Juan Manuel Marquez than anybody has ever thrown against him in a 12-round fight. All something that Ronnie Shields noted in the corner and told him to correct. Ronnie hadn't had to work quite as hard here as he did in the Rocky Juarez-Chris John fight that preceded this. And he'll be trying to steer his man down the stretch for sure. Straight right hands landing for Juan Manuel Marquez. Left hook lands again for Diaz. Left hook to the body, all by Juan Diaz. Now Marquez tries to come back. I don't know if Marquez is going to be able to maintain all the way through, you know, because he, he throws a lot of punches, but the fights with Pacquiao, he had a lot of in-between time. Diaz is pushing him a lot more. And his mouth is open, Emmanuel, and he's breathing past his mouth guard. 
And it looks as though the stamina advantage is beginning to show for the baby bull. Marquez has fought a bit with his mouth open since the third round. Uh, the pace is something, as you noted, Jim, that he's not used to. But he's not landing a lot of clean blows. You don't get the reaction from the crowd that's whenever he is in, but he's landing a lot of clean blows there. Especially in the middle of the ring, as yeah. Harold mentioned. Yeah. Two straight right hands by Marquez. Two more big left hooks by Diaz. Drives Marquez back against the ropes. Lands a straight right hand of his own. Marquez trying to counter again. Diaz keeping the pressure on. He listened to Ronnie between rounds. Here you can see the intensity of the furious exchanges that they have. And you see the punches are landing. Short punches, squid flying. Shows the type of a fight this. You've seen the energy. In January, it was a tremendous crowd in Staples Center in Los Angeles for Shane Mosley's whacking of Antonio Margarito. Last Saturday night, big crowds in Madison Square Garden and Youngstown, Ohio for Miguel Cotto and Kelly Pavlik. Now this, economic conditions are helping to bring boxing back to its roots and fans are responding. And now there's a cut outside Diaz's right eye. And the left uppercut from Marquez, which has been maybe his most effective punch. Along with the straight right hand. So they're equal in cuts now. Marquez is having a strong rally in the first minute of the eighth round. There comes the uppercut again. He's found a, in a row. He found a home with that left uppercut between the gloves. Diaz isn't landing many of these. No. But he's asserting his energy again. Good job of blocking punches there by the baby bull. That cut could pose a problem between rounds for Joe Chavez again. You saw the job that Chavez did with Rocky Juarez's cut in the first fight. He'll have to go to work on Diaz That's between rounds. The same thing as, you know, Marquez is fighting for the pride of his country. You know, even though they're both over the Mexican right now, Marquez is saying that he would die in the ring and leave all the blood that he has in his body to for his country in this fight. Because he considers Diaz a half Mexican. He's American Mexican. What action. This is amazing. Marquez is a good defensive fighter, but Diaz overwhelms his defense, overtaxes it with the sheer volume of his punches. Even as Marquez sharpshoots and continues to land the flusher harder shots. And as the blood flows, the urgency level rises. And you can see now it looks like the expression on Diaz's face has changed somewhat. And Marquez's confidence level is starting to grow now. Diaz did not respond well to the cut against Nate Campbell. He's cut in a similar kind of dire way here against Marquez. Well, we told you how Marquez adjusts and yep, comes Mar on. Oh, and he's Diaz, Mar Diaz got caught with a left hook and he looks stunned. 25 seconds to go. Can left. the great technician find yeah. a way? Diaz, Diaz with a left hook to back him off. That left hook was about as clutch a punch as Diaz could possibly have thrown. And you know, Marquez is an experienced fighter, and he can help him getting into trouble, but I don't know if Diaz can help that, because he has not had that type of experience. Okay, Warren. Hey, what was it? I'm a punch. A punch? Here you see Marquez mixing up his punches, punches to the outside and between the gloves. I think that left uppercut between the gloves right there was a shot that caused the cut. You can see the blood just start to spurt as soon as he landed that left uppercut. And here is the left hook that he catches with the head, which he just simply didn't see the punch. And it's a, it's a punch that hurts is always one you didn't see. Because he thought he had blocked it, but it came. For Juan Manuel Marquez, 40 out of 85 by CompuBox numbers. He has landed only 18 out of 70. Harold Letterman's scorecard begins to tighten. Marquez making his patented mid-round rush. He's the heavier-handed fighter, and he's the more accurate puncher. And it's starting to take its toll on Diaz. Another CompuBox milestone. Marquez is now ordered by CompuBox. I got a feeling they're going to smash every possible CompuBox record for these two fighters tonight while they smash each other's faces. Exactly. What an amazing adjustment Marquez made, Emmanuel, in about the yeah. third or fourth round to find that uppercut and start to hammer away at it with 
two and three uppercuts at a time. Very smart, smart fight. He's made great adjustments. Last time this time, he would be watching, but as he's turning around, he's back in the fight, and Diaz is starting to be up right now, seeing a little bit. You know, center wrestling, when Diaz had his first professional fight, he was in Mexico. He met Marquez, and they became friends for that night. And Marquez said he never would dream at that time, especially being that he was only 16, that he would end up fighting with Diaz. He said he was such a nice kid, so warm, so personable. They're taunting each other in the ring. The yeah. <laughs> Great left hook by Diaz. He's trying to turn the tide through the sheer force of will. In between all of us, the referee still is not to have to make one pitch, which means if anyone gets seriously hurt in this fight, they're probably going to get stopped. All credit to the referee. Because they when don't know the it, It'll be the first thing he's done in the fight. Though Marquez is the much more experienced. In fact, it's Diaz who's had more experience fighting at this pace over the course of the fight. And he's 10 years younger. And he's fighting in his hometown. And he's supposedly the stronger man. And he's hurt. Yeah. A huge uppercut. Down goes Diaz. Well, let's see how it goes. He doesn't know how to clinch. Can he make it out of the ring? 35 seconds to go. A very brave Juan Diaz will probably go back to fighting. A Spanish fighter would probably clinch, but I don't think that's what he's going to do. And look at Marquez go to the body. Look at him go to the body to try to set up the finish. And what a right hand. And that will be that. What you just saw was a really good young fighter knocked out by a great old fighter. Absolutely. And you're pound for pound number one. Maybe. Marquez. Just my No, be. that's what you said, and you have good grounds to say that. Well, let me say this. That's as sensational as any performance Manny Pacquiao's ever produced, for sure. No discredit to Pacquiao, who is great. Marquez is just as great.